We discussed with the discrete time systems a little bit. Uh, and here's another, we're just coming back to this. And that's where the powers of, actually, when we discussed that, basically it was very informal discussion. Just gave you one result, which helps you to do something about those systems. I didn't give you any background or uh, explanation why that result works. Now, actually, you'll see more why that result works. Actually, uh, this spectral analysis, that's, that's at the core of that result we discussed with you earlier. So what's the discrete time systems? I'll just give you an example. Uh, of the discrete time system. Imagine you have two sequences of numbers, xk and yk, where k is the non-negative integer. You can, you can think of lots of different stories behind these numbers. Like uh, if you, I mean, your, just the example which I saw yesterday, I mean, the story which I read yesterday, it was like, uh, imagine xk is the, uh, I'll show you, as a matter of fact, It's a, it's in the it's in the lecture notes of Jonathan Kress. I mean, if you just if you're following my uploads, there's a section here which is called 2010 lecture notes, and uh, it was I think in the lecture 20. I think it's here in the lecture 21. Beg your pardon. It will amuse you. That's why I'm showing you this. Too many, too many pages here. Here, here. You can think of this. You can, you can use this interpretation. You see. <laughs> so you can think of one sequence of numbers as the defense expenditures of hobbits in year K, and the other one, defense expenditure of orcs in the in the, in the year K. All right. You can, like I said, you can you can think of lots of different backgrounds. What you what you can how, how you can interpret this sequence of numbers. All right. The important thing is, the important from a mathematical point of view, the important thing is, is that it's always, it's often happens when you have these numbers from from some uh, case you study or from some experiment you investigating. Important thing is you can you can produce relations between the numbers in the next year and the numbers in the current year. For instance, if you think of these expenditures, you, you may think that the x in the next year, the expenditure will be 30% of the expenditure on hobbits in the year K and 50% of the expenditure on the hobbits on, in, on the orcs in year K. And the second one has a relation like this, negative 60%, which doesn't make, make much, much sense in the, in the story with hobbits and orcs, but still it's, it, it can be true for some other models, okay? So it often happens that when you describe some, uh, when you just, uh, describe some system which in, which evolves with time, discrete time or continuous time. Continuous time we're going to discuss on we're going to discuss on, on Tuesday. Uh, this time we discuss discrete time. If, uh, when you have a model which evolves with time, normally you can predict the next state of a model in terms of the current state. That's what's happening here. And normally what you what you want to achieve. You want to say, imagine I start my model with some initial conditions, like this, for instance. How can I predict what would be the state of my model after some fixed number of times, after some fixed number of cycles? That's very typical in many applications. That's why we call it discrete time system. The system evolves with time, and you have to predict it in some future state given on the current state. That's why the power of matrices, believe it or not, are, are of great help. Because what you can do is this. You can introduce a vector quantity, which will just combine both of your x and y, numerical quantities like this. You can introduce a matrix. This time it will be the matrix with the first row of these coefficients and the second row of these coefficients. And then you can say that this uh, recursive relation of the state of your model in the k plus one year in, in terms of the state of the model in the kth year is simply this relation. Simple this one single matrix identity. And the initial conditions, they transform into the vector initial condition like this. So if you want to predict the state of your model in the future year, all you do, you do this. 
Your state of the model in the kth year, it's a B times the state of the model in the K take one year, which in turn, B squared times the state of the model in K take two year, and that will be B cubed in, term, in terms of the K take three year. So you can unravel this all the way to the zero state, and the extra factor will be B to the power K, that power of the matrix, which we now know how to compute efficiently. So it will be just like this. You see, just one line solves the whole problem. Now I can predict what will be the state of my model in the kth year, like this. Initial value vector times the power of the matrix B, for which we know how to compute it in an effective way. And all we have to do, we have to just follow the steps which is done before. Uh, and again, you see, you now you can understand why I chose these particular coefficients, because these particular coefficients, they are simply, I mean, my B matrix, it's simple, it's simply one-tenth of my A matrix from the slide before, from two slides before. It's again, uh, if you just, if you, uh, uh, if you read those lecture notes I just showed you from uh, Jonathan Kress lecture notes, you will see that his matrix when he tries to present this orc example is different. But I, don't, I didn't want to use his matrix because for that matrix, we didn't do the spectral analysis. If we use that matrix, we need to do all of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors all over again, which, is, which in current conceived condition will be just a waste of time. So I, I will use the, my A matrix for which we know everything now. We know what's the kth power of the A matrix is. We just computed it two slides ago. And therefore, A is diagonalizable. Uh, I'm just copying things from my slide before with, G, with the choice of D like this and the choice of P like this and choice of the P inverse like this. So if I want to compute this right hand side, I just make this observation. Because B is one tenth of A, the diagonalization relation for the A matrix becomes the diagonalization relation for the B matrix with the difference that this time I take G with one tenth factor, it will still be diagonal matrix. It just here will be six on 10, here will be three on 10. And therefore, kth power of this B matrix, it will take this form, which is the kth power of the A matrix. As a matter of fact, probably this is quite excessive explanation. You basically can take this one to the kth power Basically, you can take this to the kth power, like this, with the same effect. But the reason I just gave this extra, just to show you that when you scale a matrix, you can come up with a diagonalization representation for the scaled matrix relatively easy. So all I have to do now, I have to copy, I have to copy my the formula we have established for the power of the of this particular A matrix from the slide before is a formula. It's a lengthy one, but you have it on your notes. If I use this formula with extra one, uh, with extra 10 to the negative k factor, and with this vector here on the right hand side, that will give me the state of my model in the kth year. Here it is. My xk vector is one on nine from here, 10 to the negative k from here, uh, 100 is just a common factor across this vector. And then I multiply this matrix by the vector 1 and 1, which means I have to sum up these two terms and I have to sum up these two terms. So the vector will be this vector, 11, 3k is negative 5, negative 6k, and 9, negative 6k. This is a formula which gives the state of my model in any future year with no recurrence or anything else. Just a direct formula which gives me, gives me the state of my model. You can split it now, of course. You can split it into xk part and yk part because originally the model was a numerical model. If you split your model, xk will take this form and yk will take this form. And it's a complete solution to this discrete system model. Is something wrong? <laughs> Should I level? This 11, 
Uh, the 11 came up when I... Oh, yeah. Just wait a sec, wait a sec. Uh, we just add these two together. It's 5. No, wait a sec. It's 5 plus 9. Ah, yeah. That's right. It is a typo here. 14. Thank you.